this meeting of the trustees of the Lamisa Independent School District is now in order. It is 6 p.m. on November 21st, 2024. A quorum is present with all board members present. This meeting has been duly called, and the notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. Mr. Hughes, would you lead us in prayer, please? <coughs> yes, if you would pray with me, please. Lord, we thank you for this uh, this beautiful day that you've given us. Lord, we just want to we just want to thank you for all the blessings that you have uh, have given us here, and uh, we just uh, thank you most for the for the opportunity of making the decisions that uh, that affect our kids, and uh, we just want to ask that you would guide and direct all of the decisions that are made here this evening. You would go with us as we leave here, and just. Uh, guide us and protect us and be with everyone in their travels this weekend and have them be safe. Amen. 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 Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> this is a mother and daughter that would like to speak together. I told them they had three minutes together. Okay. <clears throat> I'm Gracie okay. Hernandez. <clears throat> And this is June Hernandez. And uh, I'm just... I, I just needed to know what item on the agenda that you will be speaking on. Um, we're talking about a class that I've emailed you about, Richie. And, um, but, I mean, is it on the agenda? I don't know what the agenda is. Uh, there's a copy. Do we Probably, have a copy yes, we, there is a copy. Only here? because we're only able to speak on <coughs> what's on the agenda. The okay, class. well, she wants to advocate for herself and speak for... Um, what's going on in the classroom that is important to her to speak up for. And I need her, um... Okay, um, you will have to take the proper, proper channels for that because when it comes to the board meetings, we can only speak... The public forum is to speak on any board item agenda, items that are on the agenda. not anything that has anything to do with on the agenda. It's just that I've already done a bunch of stuff to advocate for her oh. in the oh, with, about this classroom, and okay, um, and I need her to be able to speak for herself and advocate because she's in the classroom and nothing has okay. been changing in this classroom. Okay, and, um, I'm gonna have to stop you there only because <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, legally, we can only speak on what's on the agenda, and like I said, you will have to take the proper channels if it has to do with a campus or administration or. You would have to, you know, by chain of command, go. I've already done that. Okay. Well, then, then, then you would have to have I've them guide called, you on what else you could do next. I, I already did. I already called TEA. I've emailed the governor. Okay. I've done a bunch of stuff so that she can advocate for herself because it's already been a whole okay. lot of stuff that's been well, going I'm, on. Well, I appreciate y'all coming, but um, for now, we're not able to speak on anything other than what's on the agenda. I'm sorry. Well, how does she be able to advocate for herself if nobody's willing to hear her? Well, like I said, uh, speak to the ad administration I've on that campus that. and ask them what other, what else you could do because as far as, there's nothing we can do. May I have a person with the privilege? Yes. Well, if you go to the administration, they will guide you through the process because well, if we hear you now, we can't help you later. And what I was going to say, there's a <clears throat> formal grievance because I hear what you're saying and that you have at the parent-teacher conference possibly. I don't know if you've actually had a one-on-one -on -one meeting at the middle school. I've had a meeting here for the conference when we had the conference, teacher conferences. I've had one there with all the teachers, with the teacher as well. Right, but I guess, Gracie, what I'm saying is if you want to go the formal route, Mr. Castillo can print out a form because it actually starts with the level one written complaint. And that is how it would lead you to here because that, as... As April said, if they hear you tonight and then you file a formal, what's called a grievance, mm -hmm. then no and one can you hear your grievance when it gets to that. So it's not that we don't want to hear yeah. it. Okay. You would just we have just, to go to this. It, you could get with Mr. Castillo tomorrow and he will show you which steps that you can take so that if you need it to come here, it can. There's an actual form. It'll be called a level one. Okay. And if you fill that out, and then it'll go from level one, two, and then the board is level three. And that, that is where okay. it doesn't matter if it's on the agenda because you would be on the agenda. 
Okay. And so he can have that printed out, and we can bring it to the middle school tomorrow so that you got it ready to roll. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about that, guys. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Now we'll do the recognition. Uh, we have a staff recognition tonight, and I'm going to have Albert as well. Albert, come on up here with you. There he is. I was like, miss. I didn't see we couldn't find him. Um, I'm going to let him talk about him a little bit too, but you have some of my favorite people in the building tonight because I, I asked, with the staff rec recognition, I'm always trying to find people that we don't always get to recognize. Uh, they're not the coaches on the field on Friday night. They're not uh, the, you know, the UIL, the extracurricular. They're the people that are helping all that happen. Uh, I remember when we hosted the, what was it called, Miss Kelch, the, the conference? C I have a trouble with the word CTAP, but we hosted the CTAP. <laughs> it looked immaculate, every bit of it. And I was told over and over how hard our custodians worked to make it look like that, which that's awesome, but that's every day. And it took an, it didn't take an event like that, but they got recognized for an event like that. But every single day, they're the first ones there. They're going to be the last ones to leave. They're doing the work that nobody else really wants to do. And on top of that, they're just really good people. Because mm -hmm. I've gotten the privilege to work at almost every campus. Well, not almost every campus, every campus. And with them all. And I can see them friends. And Joe is so unhappy to be here every time I look at him. Because it's Thursday night football, and me and Joe talk football. And he wants to go home and watch the, the who is it tonight, Joe? Steelers and Browns. Yeah, Steelers and Browns. <laughs> but if I could just have all of y'all come stand behind Albert. I'm going to let Albert talk. That's everybody. Come on up here. Um, including, there you go, Aunt Jen Crystal. I'm going to have Albert talk a little, and then I may let him introduce themselves. But guys, there's nobody in our district that works as hard as this group. Um, they're the ones that are on speed dial on my phone. Um and I just love, I love spending time with them. So, one, thank y'all for being here because I know y'all didn't want to come. <laughs> but I'm very, <laughs> but I'm glad y'all are here because y'all do not get the recognition that y'all deserve. And it doesn't matter how much recognition we give you, it still won't be what you deserve. But I love every one of you. Albert, talk about them a little bit, and then we might embarrass them and let them talk a little mm -hmm. bit. Angie, you ready? No. <laughs> <laughs> Each and every one of these guys at their campus, their leader at their specific campus and what they do is they get with every single custodian to make sure it's handled and that's one thing that I like since I started with it. we go we do walkthroughs we make sure that the main thing is that every bathroom every inch of that school is clean for all our kids and it's due to all these guys hard work. without them we couldn't do anything and that is number one these guys are the stars and that's 100% I want to thank them all, each of them. Y'all can introduce each other. Why don't we start with Angie? <laughs> oh. Everybody knows me. I'm Angie Medrano. <laughs> I've been in the school for 27, 28 years. Oh. Angie? Hey. She's amazing. Cheers. Frank, let's just start Frank and then Angie can go again. <laughs> you guys just get it. Let's start with Frank and let's just go down. My name is Frank Torres, and I work. Four hours at the new gym, and work four hours at the superintendent's office, and it's a good job. I love it because for the, I, for, I don't have enough time at the gym. I just gotta stop and come over here, <laughs> <laughs> go back over there, and take it the next day. And I gotta pick it up again from the start. <laughs> the same old, same old grind, but it's, it's there. We love you, Frank. We love that. <laughs> Me, Angie. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Crystal Lujan. Um, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no, I'm Crystal Lujan. I've been working for the school for about seven years. I'm kind of the second hand to Angie. And I also went to school here, so I love it. Good. And, it, and she shows she loves it every day. Uh, how hard she thank you. Thank All right. Well, <laughs> my name is Andres and I've been with uh, Mamisa SD for three years. I have been with them back in the 90, 90s here full time with them. So total TRS time, I think I've hit in about 15 years. And um, I like this job, and that's why I came back to it after I retired from the state. So yeah. thank you, man. My name is Jose Ramirez. I've been with Mamisa SD for about 
Lions, Joel Undine, and this is my one of my best friends over here. And I love you. Give me a hard time. <laughs> Like I did you yesterday, like the <laughs> Yeah, we were serving, and he came over there and said, Y'all are so much slower than the real world. <laughs> uh, I've been working for, uh, for La Misa ISD for about seven years. Uh, I was uh, with one, I was out there at the prison, retired out there after 25 years. And I've done this kind of work before, my mom and dad did this kind of work for like 30, 40 years, so. I like doing it too. It's it's a job. It's something to do. You see little kids running around and some of the crazy things they do. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it makes you a little mad. But you, know, that's, you just gotta sit there. Just a kids. Lot. They're learning. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm Margarita Cifuentes, and I've been working with Lisa ISD for 11 years, and I was a custodian. At my old school, at Klondike, and I work with Joe's parents also. And the funny story that I have about his parents <laughs> that I would like to share, he was trying to show me how to run that, uh, what is it, that sort of side by side. But back then I was thinner, I weighed only 100 pounds, and it took me with it. <laughs> was yelling at him like, I'm plugging, I'm plugging. <laughs> and Joe's dad was like, let go of it. But I wouldn't let go of it. And I, I don't know, I don't even know how far I dragged. <laughs> I like my job. I mean, I mean, I just like cleaning, you know. I'm a cleaning lady. <laughs> Her son works for me as well. Yes. He's great. Yeah. And this is my sister. Oh, no, no. yeah. <laughs> We appreciate you. I'm and I started working back in November of last year because my husband passed away, so I needed a job. But the funny story I have is when um, when uh, Joe or not Joe uh, Juan was showing me around the school, he said, "Come this way. We're going to come through this door." And I thought he was going to go into the men's restroom. So I was like, <laughs> "He's like, come on!" And I was like, and he's like. And so he opens the door and I notice, oh, it's the gym. He's like, yeah, what do you think it was? <laughs> the men's room? <laughs> I thought he wanted me to clean the men's room first. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> but it's, it's a challenge for me every day because I hadn't worked in seven years. So working here has been really a challenge for me. So it's been really awesome. And I learn everything new every day. So oh, it's awesome. awesome. I love it. <laughs> Before, before they sit down, Joe, or maybe one, one of y'all just talked about the kids and all the crazy stuff they do. And for me, because I have worked at a lot of districts, what separates this group, and it started with you at South Elementary, because I, I, my first principal's job, she was the first custodian there. They know our kids. They, they don't just know our kids. They interact with our kids. They talk to our kids. They are role models for our kids, and that's different. And I don't know that y'all know that's different, but it's different. And it means the world to me because they're who matter. And I love to watch our kids love y'all and look up to y'all because y'all are amazing and y'all deserve it. And I just appreciate everything y'all do. So thank y'all. Can we get a picture with them all? I will say something. Yeah. Yes. Jesse, get up here. Hold on, Ron. I'm not cutting you off. Jesse's trying to hide. Oh, Jesse, get up here. <laughs> All right, let, let Jesse talk, and then I'll, and then I'll let Ron. Finish. Jesse, get up here. <laughs> Jesse's my movie, my movie pal. He goes to all the movies. That's what we talk. Go ahead, Jesse. Well, I don't know. He's been here forever. He's been here a while. Oh, okay. what do you, you, you never had any know? trouble talking to Jesse. I think I was born at the school. That's a good He's always willing to work overtime. That's yeah, one thing. That's good. He's always willing to work. Okay, Ron, I'm sorry. I, I will say, just to be a spouse of a principal, if you, if you don't have a good custodial um, staff, I hear, I hear, I mean, I, and, yeah. and she was at South, 
loved it. And I, yeah, Angie, known her for <laughs> And yes. you're exactly she right. Grew up with my kids, I mean. My kids yeah. grew up with her. All yeah. of y'all. All, all of our kids. All of y'all. The kids have been gone. And that's exactly right. And when I got to high school, I had Crystal. When I was at North, I had Joe. And Juan is all up. I see Juan every day in the middle of the school. So, all right, man, y'all are just the best. Yeah. All right. Great. Do y'all have anything else you want to say to me? If not, I'm going to move them over here. I'm going to tell y'all the story before we get to Let's do it, man. <laughs> you getting ribbed up, y'all. <laughs> the first time I met this man. We were stripping floors. Oh, oh, I don't know if y'all seen oh, the video. Bombing the storm camera somewhere. Oh, <laughs> storm camera somewhere. I, <laughs> yeah. And, and he was go ahead. <laughs> they, I didn't know they were stripping floors, and I was in a room oh, having a meeting. I did not know when I walked out the floor was stripped, wet, everything. <laughs> you and I hit it. Oh, and went quit. straight feet up. <laughs> she has it on her desktop, like on her desktop. <laughs> and I hit the ground as hard as I can, but I did not drop my water bottle. No. <laughs> <laughs> I held it all the way. And we had to, we had to use some, uh, the, some plastic shoes, and I was going, What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> We survived. Yeah, we survived. Guys, if y'all wouldn't mind, just move over this way and turn this way, and then the board will stand up, and I'd like to get a picture of all of y'all. Thank y'all for being here. Get in here, Albert. Come on, Albert. <laughs> Great colleague. One, <laughs> two, no three. One, two, three. I want don't worry, don't worry. Hold on, hold on. We're not there. Did you see? Oh, don't you worry. I don't want that hundred dollar bill. I love that. I, I was thinking the same thing. This is for emergencies. <laughs> <laughs> you better not leave that phone laying around. Like, hold on, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Spirit fingers, Spirit fingers. Spirit fingers. Spirit fingers. Kevin, can you? There you go. Just over here. Man, let's be got about ten more seconds. Nine. For taller. Eight. Or just me. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. We'll talk about it tomorrow. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Frank. <laughs> Love you, Andy. <laughs> Motion carries seven to zero. Uh, financial review. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> I'm going to head this up again. Um, I will have Ron come to the December board meeting, and that was probably Ron's last one. Um, I don't believe it. That's what you said. <laughs> 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 I love that, though. Yeah, I know. But I do want him to have a chance to genuinely say goodbye because he's not coming back after I. I I think he's going to delete my phone number, block me, <laughs> move so to another time. house so I don't know where his address is. He's going to do everything he can. This is your last time to do it, then we need to ask all of you. <laughs> <laughs> ask away, and I'll have one email y'all you know, the answers tomorrow. <laughs> um, looking at the first page, and I'll, I'll go through it fairly, fairly quickly. Um, as y'all know, I kind of go through it and look for the things that jump out at me. Um, on the one, two, three. Three, third column from the left, if you go on down there a little bit, the very second to last number, that 118743.60, that is the theater project that we are splitting with the Weaver Foundation. So the plan, the, the, the deal with that is we put in 99000 they put in 99000 
So once the project is done, we'll give them the invoice and they'll pay back the part of it that we spent that goes on to their, onto their side. Um, above that, that minus 5652.01, that was an overpayment, so that's actually money back to us. And you're going to see here in a minute the big, there's several on that. There's a lot of annual ones, and the biggest thing we had this month was our big insurance. Uh, Chris Norris, that big ticket item is going to be throughout this deal. Okay, so I don't know what order yours is in. I believe the next thing is going to be revenue year today. And again, we look at the percentages, and <coughs> we want it to be right at 19 to 20, but we're also going to be a bit overloaded at the beginning of the year. And we can speak on it because of all the curriculum that has to get purchased at the beginning of the year. All the service center contracts that are for the, all of that happens at the very beginning of the budget. So it's going to push you over your destination just a little bit. But we're, we're, we're on it. And it'll kind of play, it'll kind of pay itself back off so down back, the road. Back on that waiver deal, we'll be getting reimbursed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <coughs> We've got to finish the project first. And the project is scheduled to start in February and get it <coughs> What they said, it's going to happen pretty quick. Yes, sir. Gensler's nervous, and I'll tell you a lie here in a minute. That's why when I pointed at him, he was a little caught off guard. He's like, I'm not up yet. Yeah, <laughs> not yet. Uh, but yes, sir, we'll, we'll be reimbursed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, when you get to the third page at the top monthly capital outlay, you'll see Moyers Group again. Anytime you see Moyers Group, that's the theater project. Okay? Okay. Um, Looking for big stuff. Uh, that next one is your normal stuff. There's the grants, and then there's your general operating fund. All right, check registry. I have two different copies of this, so one of mine is a bit different from yours. I actually had a lot on it this time, and I won't go through all of the ones that I have because that would take a bit. Um, but on that, on that front one, most of it is still annual cost, like we've got the E-rate, we've got uh, Simple Not Easy, which we do quite a bit. Occupational therapy, that is uh, something we contract out. A lot, of, a lot of what you see are mandatory costs. Aramark is there. That's our big Aramark food. Uh, that's the one time it's going to hit us. On page two, there wasn't a lot. On page three, the water bill. 3,402. I'm always looking at our utilities and comparing them, and we're, we're right on track with that. Um, on page four, the grant is halfway down through that. A lot of a lot of the stuff, anytime you see bomb and stuff goes back and forth. Some of it is paid through grants, some of it is paid locally, but it's always going to show up on the check registry. Some of the technology is grants, some of it is local, but it all shows up on the check registry. Um, I'm looking for, all right, so go to page five, and you're going to see about halfway down and almost the rest of the way down. If you look to the left, there's a little space, and it says Education Service Center. So those are all of your contracts, and there's going to be a, a page here in a minute where it has a few more. Those are all one-time per year costs um, because of all of the services that they provide us. It comes back into play here in a minute. On that next page, more annual stuff, Skyward stuff, uh, the mailing service contract. Um, page 7, that camera's at the top, that's grant. The 10,122.0, that's grant money. Insurica, so there's the big one, right? Look at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 down from there, 659, 407.97. That's the... That's Chris Norris, the talk he gave. That's the insurance cost right there. The total, the total on all that, I added that up. Seven hundred and fifty-four thousand dollars. And honestly, it was better than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to go up more than that. So, that's the scary part of all of this. Is there? And, and he talks about it when he's here. We're running out of people that will insure school districts, and when you start running out of people. People that do it can jack you up, and it's getting kind of scary. You'll see a couple more ESC 17s in there. Uh, there's a few more grants on that page. You got Dare in there. Officer Boyd, and I know we got Roach and Flores here. They helped with Dare. 
on especially that last day. That was I think we may have talked about it last time, but Boyd does a really good job with that. Yes, sir. But this year he had a really good what would y'all call that an assembly outside? Yes, sir. You know he had the the SWAT vehicle. Yes, sir. Who else was there, Roach? Who else was there? Uh, the uh... chief was all the PD. Do you remember? There were, there were quite a few we people. We had uh, the Lubbock, Lubbock Sheriff's Office, Lubbock SWAT team. Uh, Homeland Security. Homeland Security. Uh, we also had an uh, auto task force that was also involved. It was neat. Yeah. It, it, and it was for all of our elementary kids. We had it in the south, but we bust north over, so they got to see it too. We had a couple of troopers. One of them was a canine also that, that also attended to it. So. And I had the key floors of Roucher from stealing the SWAT vehicle. It was pretty <laughs> awesome. Pretty really like it. <laughs> yeah, it was nice. <laughs> Um, water bill, the, the the second part of that is right there. I didn't see much, and honestly, when you look at the total of one five one five eight six nine, if you subtract the the insurance, which Kevin, you said you added it up, what was it seven seven fifty four? Then all of a sudden, you're looking at probably what, about eight hundred thousand dollars for the month, which that's about clicking right. And we don't have to see that insurance cost again. Um, that amount of claims administrative services. What page are you on, Mr. Teller? Workers' comp. Oh, yes, sir. <coughs> That's just a one-time fix. One time. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. There's a lot of one-timers on, on this one right here. It's like 25000 And we're about done having to buy all the annual stuff. The, the first couple months of the school district, you're, you're having to renew or get all of the stuff that you use throughout the year. Um, Come on now, Flores. Come on now, Flores. Um, any, any questions over the, the general? And, if, and again, if I don't have the answer, I'll get Ron to email you. But any questions over any of that? I feel like we're in a good place. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the state of our finances here in a little while, but I don't want to hit you twice. So just on this particular stuff. Okay. Um. I think we're going to table it for now until okay. we come back from executive session. For sure. For sure. Um, other than that, there was Premier 4. There was, I don't think there was anything else. Perfect. If you don't have any questions, I would have to. Okay. Yes, I think I'm probably coming right back up. <laughs> yeah, administrator reports. With the uh, key tech tonight is going to kind of take is going to kind of take over the administrative report, but I did have them all come because December is going to be a busy time. Um, are we good? Donations, we didn't talk about donations. Oh, were they on there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there were two. Premier Ford, uh -huh. Yes, ma'am. There were two. I don't remember. the. You got the check stubs, yes, I think, right? Yeah. Yeah. Go on, Tornado. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's like, who's I'll I'll get exactly what it was. I'll ask Ron exactly what it was. Okay. I think it's still All right. Premier Ford. Right? No, it's Premier, isn't it? It's Premier Ford GTV. I'll get I'll get Ron to Frankie's. This what? Premier sponsoring our Thanksgiving meals. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's okay. Premier. Did we do that today? Yeah. Yeah. Because you all been doing that today. Um, are we good? Yes. Okay. So on, on the campus reports, I really was just going to let you kind of, each principal, if, if you want to talk briefly, I have South, I think North gave you their December schedule. Um, I, I wanted to spend a little bit of time on PTEC tonight, so I was going to kind of go through that. There's South for Christmas, uh, for December, where they go to the movies. We've got a South Christmas concert on December 16th. I can email you that so you have that. Mr. Rich, they do all have a copy also. Oh, they have a copy also. That's like awesome. Oh, we passed it on the That's what's in here. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Did I skip Matthew? Yeah. <laughs> well, let me get there. How did I skip over that? Okay, let me talk about Matthew real quick. Matthew, come on up. Can y'all all see this first of all? Yeah. Okay, so Matthew works for Government Capital, which is a company y'all heard me talk about before. Um, we're looking at two ways to move forward at some point in time with our transportation. Uh, and we know the state of funding and education in Texas, but we also still have to make sure we take care of our needs and our kids, and so it's kind of a tricky thing to figure out the best way to do that. And uh, Chief is here as well because 
really what we've been looking at is a, another bus at some point, and then originally I told you I was looking at getting some new fleet vehicles and then moving some of our fleet vehicles down to be the new SRO vehicles because all of our SRO vehicles are sitting no less than 250,000. I think they're all 250 and over. Well, I was telling Chief about that one day, and so Chief has brought, just in case we're curious about it, um, he's quoted just five SRO vehicles, fully loaded, uh, where we wouldn't have to outfit them, because that's the thing, if we were to move fleet vehicles down, then you've got to pay to get them outfitted with all of the things that our SROs need. And so he was buying some new vehicles for his people, correct? And I, we just kind of thought, well, let's, let's price some, so if we ever move forward, we have that option as well. So we have several options to go through. Now, none of that matters to you. <laughs> oh, I'm not entirely. <laughs> but, but Government Capital is a company that we've talked about before. There's a couple different ways we can move in. Albert, Albert may chime in with some questions as well. In January, we're going to visit with somebody that uh, leases vehicles, leases fleet. I always lean a little bit more towards the, the ownership. Howard and I were talking about that earlier today, which way is the best way to go. But Government Capital is a company that would allow us to finance. They've been working with a lot of districts that are in the same budget situation we're in, the same financial situation we're in. And I just asked, thought it would be better for you all to ask him questions within me. So turn it over to you, sir. Sure. Well, first of all, thank you guys for, for having me out. I uh, really appreciate it. Um, before we get into the nuts and bolts of financing, I'm sure you guys are like, okay, who the heck are you guys? Why does it matter at La Mesa ISD? So 10,000 foot view, government capital is a public finance company. We've been around since 1993. Um, here's the two big key things, that, well, three big key things that matter to you all. One, we are invested in the same organizations that you guys are, TACS, TREA, Anything education, super heavily involved there. We've worked with over 56% of the school districts statewide. So more school districts know us than don't know us. And the third thing is we really specifically exist for medium and small size schools. So our, our motto is how to bring Wall Street to Main Street. So we want to make sure that Momisa gets the same kind of advantages and, and batting advantages that a Lubbock, an Amarillo, a Fort Worth, a Dallas gets because you're just an underserved market. So our first primary job is to advocate for y'all to the market, make sure you get the best possible structure and the best possible rates. Make sense? Also, sometimes I talk like a Baptist preacher, so if I move too fast, you tell me to slow down or stop or go back, and I have no problem doing that. Okay, so we're going to talk about, there are four, but we're going to talk about three. Uh, ways to finance. So I'm going to just give you guys a 10,000 foot view and then we'll get it more specific to you guys. So two sides of your budget, you guys know there's the INS side, the MO side. Everything I'm going to talk to you about is on the MO side. If you want to hear INS, we have a sister firm, I would be happy to have them talk about it, uh, but I don't look good in orange or stripes, so I'm not going to talk about securities. So, uh, so there are the three buckets you have available. The one we're going to talk about the most is going to be the Public Property Finance Act, because that's going to be anything with wheels, anything I can unbolt and move, technology, um, that is what school districts do the most. The other two really are ways to kind of fill the gap on projects that either you had a bond fail or you don't necessarily want to bond for, but it's still a need. All right, Public Property Finance Act. So this comes from Local Government Code 271.005. Um, it's for personal property only. So the, the easy way to explain personal property if I can unbolt it and move it and not damage it, it's personal property. Um, so there are some things that fall in there that people don't think of. So like HVAC. HVAC, most people be like, that's real property. It's stationary. It's set. Technically, it's bolted in. Technically, I can move it. While you never would, you can. And so if you needed to finance it with a Public Property Finance Act, you can do that. Uh, the big things to note with this, we can go up 25 years. Can. Right now, the market is keeping it kind of around 20. I would imagine with what is going on in the economic world right now, you're probably going to see the 25-year term come back around as far as buyers who are going to be willing to let you go that far. 
because there's what the code says and then there's what the market's going to let you do. Um, you do not have to go through the AG office for this. That saves you costs, it saves you time. Um, it takes us about three to five weeks from the day we sign, get a signed resolution to delivery for you guys. The big thing that matters with the Public Property Finance Act and why it's different from like a lease purchase, that's the way every other state does this. Texas is unique, they're special, so this is helpful for you. There is no lien. So you're gonna, <coughs> like the day that you purchase this, from the vendor side, it looks like a cash purchase because we fund you cash directly, buy your stuff, and you hold title day one. No one else is involved. There's no third party. You don't have to go have me fill a form out to go pay your vendor. You pay your vendor. And there's a couple of advantages to that. One, because of the way this is structured, I can usually get you a little bit of a lower rate than a lease purchase. And then two, if you're a cash buyer, vendors tend to knock a little bit off because you're paying cash. Mm -hmm. Both of those things are the advantage of the school district. So I know that was a lot of information. Any questions on that one? And I'll ask questions as well if you have them. But y'all, I want y'all to ask questions because he's going to be able to answer them better than I ever could. And we're going to come back to this at the end when we kind of get around to questions. The other two I'm going to fly through because they don't necessarily apply to this. All right, so examples. We've said some of these HVAC, tablets, buses, smart boards, sports lighting, police cars, the upfitting costs associated with police cars. I can do a little bit of the soft costs um, outside of the hard costs. Um, we've done body armor before. We've done, I mean, it, basically if it can be picked up and moved and it's not a consumable, then I can probably finance it. We've even done software as a service before. Uh, that one has to be ton taxable, so it's a little more expensive, but there's a lot you can do with this. Typically what I tell any of my folks if you don't know, ask, uh, and then we can kind of get into that. All right, and these can be refinanced. So that matters in this market. Everything, every market indicator says rates are going to come down. Now, we don't know how fast they're going to come down, but if you issue debt at whatever rate you get today, and a year down the road, you're like, man, I, I could be paying a lot less. Also, if you want to pay less, we can pay less. We can go refinance that. You have to meet your call provision which we can negotiate for you on the front end, but we can refinance these. They can also be paid off early without penalty. Um, you, again, you have to meet your call provision. Usually that's 50% of the life of the note, but if you tell me that having a short call so you can refinance or pay off is important, I can make sure we bake that into it, but I have to know on the front end. I cannot uncork something once it's been, on, been executed. That makes sense. All right, maintenance tax notes. So, Maintenance tax notes could fall in INS, could fall in m &O. On my side, um, that simply means you cannot go over a million dollars. So this comes from the Education Code 45.108. Um, if it's under a million dollars, it does not require AG approval. What this is for, this is for any kind of real property remodel. So you could take a building all the way down to the dirt and build it back up, and as long as you don't change square footage, you can use this methodology. As soon as you say, I want to build a new bus barn, it's out. Can't use it. Make sense? Everything that I said about the Public Property Finance Act applies to this. Same time frame, same thing with refi, all of that. Um, and you, this one, there is a term restriction per the code, and that's 20 years. All right. And the time warrant. So, Time warrant, also education code, comes out of 45.103. Here's the big thing with the time warrant. This is kind of like our, our queen on the chessboard. It does everything. It does re remodel, it does new property, it does everything you can possibly come up with. There are a couple key differences between this and the tax maintenance note. With the tax maintenance note, it's a million dollars per calendar year. So technically, if you were doing a project and it's going to be $2 million, you could issue a million dollars in December. In January 1, you can go issue a million dollars again and do it in phase one, phase two. A time warrant has a million dollar cap in aggregate. So you cannot exceed a million dollars. If you want to borrow on time warrant again, you have to pay down debt to come back and issue that same thing. This also has a term restriction <coughs> per the code of 15 years. Otherwise, this and your maintenance note, very, very, very similar. All right. So. We can kind of we can do this quickly. So the stadium project, this is just kind of a way you can use your buckets together. Because you have multiple buckets, you're a smaller school district. 
one of the things that I hear from small school districts a lot is either I can't pass a bond or I'm not taking that to my voters because we just moved around tax rates and all that. But I have this project and it's more than any one of those things can do. So how do I move forward? Well, that's where we take a little bit of everything and kind of cram it together and pull things out, put them in buckets, and we can use these together to get you across the finish line. So for this stadium project, there was an existing stadium that they were doing some remodel and expansion. So they used a million dollars on a maintenance uh, note to do uh, things like the track, the turf, parking lots, the, anything that was a remodel. The expansion they did under the time warrant, and then anything that was could be unbolted and moved, we did as a public property finance act. So things like the sports lighting, the bleachers, the uh, doors, there's a lot of that stuff that if I can take it off and move it, we can do under that. So that's, I know that's really not what we're going to spend a lot of time on tonight. That's just kind of food for thought if you guys ever need it. All right. So what do you need to get started? Um, basically, if you guys get to a point where you're like, hey, I'm, we need to get this thing. We need to finance it, um, especially kind of considering where the state of everything is financially for schools <coughs> this year. So over 75% of school districts pass deficit budgets. We know that at some point Austin's going to release some funds down, but that's not today, and you still have needs. So to get started, I just need somebody from the school, usually it's Mr. Ritchie, reaches out and says, I need this, here's what it costs, here are the terms I want to see. We put together a proposal, send it to you, the board. You, the board, then look at that, decide on the term that you want, you pass an authorizing resolution, and then from that point, I basically don't need anything until you're ready to sign documents. Behind the scenes, I can go through a map, pull all of your financials, uh, we can do a credit screen, <coughs> develop the documents for it, send it out to you, you guys sign it, your attorney reviews it, and then we fund you cash five days after we receive those back in office. Pretty pretty straightforward. Is it something that <clears throat> it has to get approved, right? I mean, it's not an It automatic. does have to be approved by the board. It does not have to be approved by voters okay. because it's not going against your tax rate. No, it's but going I mean, against like your when you get the approval to say it's not something that will come, y'all will come back and say, um, the, so you do have a max debt test you have to pass. It is really, really, really hard to get up against that max debt test. Usually what happens with the max debt test where you can't pass it is that you try to do too short of a term. You, you guys get really aggressive on, well, technically I can squeeze it under the cap in this amount of time. It's like, yeah, but we still have to meet coverage requirements because I have a responsibility to you to make sure you don't get over your skis. And again, you can pay them off early, so it's not a big deal if you do a seven-year term. You're like, well, we were able to pay off in five. That's fine. What's a problem is if you're trying to do it in five and your coverages are tight and something happens. Well, you only have a five-year term, and now you can't make a payment. So that's what that debt test exists for. What we compare it to is just your income and outgoing. You have to hit coverage, and you have to pass a max debt test. So coverage is a... 1-2 or a one two, five. It just means you need to have about 20 to 25 percent left over after you finance to give you some some cushion. Um, and then the max debt test, I'll show it to you guys. It's on here, um, and that's per the state. And that looks like that. If anybody wants to take pictures of it, have fun with that. Uh, I can send this to y'all. This is this is what the math side of the business does. Uh, that is not my favorite part. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> okay, so I, that, that was a lot quickly. Now let me tie it up to what Mr. Rich was talking about. You guys are talking about vehicles. I know that you mentioned the leasing program. You know, we work with a lot of schools. We also work with a lot of, of small cities, and, and the leasing <coughs> option is, is equally available to schools, counties, school districts, all, all those political uh, subdivisions. That's an option. Any of the smaller districts that I have dealt with, the smaller cities, anything under about a population of, I'm going to say, about 45,000, have not been huge fans of the lease route. Um, for one, one of the things that most of them look at is, if I'm leasing, I just perpetually put myself in debt. It never pays off. I'm always going to have this cost now, and I never get an asset out of it. There's no way for me to recoup the cost. <clears throat> Two, you are now abdicating the maintenance of those vehicles to a different company which I don't know how y'all feel about it, but transportation directors tend to not like that very much at all. They don't have control of their own stuff. Um, so what they sell you on, they sell you a kind of a bill of goods. Oh, we're going to take care of the maintenance. You get a new vehicle every five years, so on and so forth, but it comes with really tight handcuffs. 
Um, so you're well within your right to do it. That's just what I have heard from school districts and cities who've done it. This really, those programs from from conversations I have with my clients are more made for an Amarillo or a Lubbock, where it's like, hey, look, we're burning cars every three years anyway, so we're financing or we're bonding every three to five years to pay for 50 cars. This is just easier for us. For a small district that is going to hold that car until the wheels fall off, and you're going to do the maintenance on it, you're going to typically those districts, those cities, they tend to go the finance route and they pay it off in three to five years, then they hold that car until they can't anymore, and then they turn around and sell it and make something off of it. Um, yeah, you're more than welcome to do whatever way you want to. That's just what I've heard in the market. Um, things that might matter to you on vehicles. Uh, I know kind of the situation that schools are in right now financially. Um, you've got a couple billion dollars sitting in Austin. It's got everybody real tight on coverage. So there's a lot of school districts, at least this is what I've experienced the last 18 months, two years. A lot of districts go, well, we would normally pay cash, but now we're tight. Um, and I don't know what I'm going to have coming in next year. We can defer that first payment for you 12 to 18 months, give give Austin time to figure their crap out, give you all some money, and then again, you don't have to go to term. You want to, that's fine. A lot of school districts do. They kind of set this up almost like a revolving program. They Every three to five years, they finance a vehicle, and they build their fleet that way, and that's just they help spread the dollars out so that um, they're not constantly taking chunks out of fund balance because cash is king. Um, I'll tell you, some, a school district that's similar to y'all kind of went through this recently was with Rungi ISD, Hector Dominguez. Uh, he had been there about three years. The school district had never issued debt. Uh, they had suburbans that had over 250,000 miles on it with no AC, which in Texas is a little bit of a problem. Um, and he said, listen, I've got to find a way to fix this. I can't afford them. And my board, just they're not comfortable with debt. They've never done debt before. Uh, so we went in, had that conversation with them. They ended up financing uh, two Suburbans, and then they turned around and used one of these other methodologies to do a new roof for them. Just kind of helped them in their fiscal planning. So I know that's a lot of information. What questions do you have? How can I kind of fill some gaps in for you? I have a question on the value of, uh, as far as the buses. I know if we purchase them, those are something that's going to pop off the market once we use them all the way down to the ground. Sure. Um, when we're purchasing them, we get a loan to buy them, and we're having to do it in-house. When we purchase through the company, our school, our campus here, we don't have a mechanic that can do that kind of work. So my question is, do you, when you spoke with the other campuses, have you ever uh, had as far as, like, are there third parties that can get a mechanic that can work or help with the school district? Because we don't have that. Sure. Um... Most of the school districts I've talked to, either they know somebody locally who does a lot of that, or the maintenance director, just because it kind of came with their territory, was like, oh, I know how to do that. I was a diesel mechanic in the rink or, you know, whatever. Right. Uh, that's typically how they handle it. Um, and could that be thrown in with the loan as well for them? So I can do up to 10% of soft costs. Once I go above 10%, um, that, there's not a whole lot I can do with it. And I also we need to know on the front end what the cost is with an invoice so that we can roll that up in the financing. But it has to be less than 10%, otherwise it no longer falls under the purview of any personal property. Okay, so as, if it goes past the 10, then that changes it? Yeah, okay, for sure. Gotcha. So, and there's no charge on paying off of it? <laughs> now, you, again, you have to meet your call provision. So, for, for example, typically a five-year note, <laughs> Uh, your first payment you can pay off is starting in payment three. So you can pay it off starting payment three on a payment date. If it's important to the board that you have a short call provision and you tell me that, I can go advocate for the market and try to shorten that down. The longer term we get, the more that those call provisions start cutting down less than 50%. If you're doing a 20-year note, usually they're not going to give you a 10-year call. They're going to give you a six-year call or a five-year call. <clears throat> I've never really seen them go longer than six years. It doesn't mean they don't, but it's not typical. And with the market kind of on the predicted market going toward improving, I would imagine that there's going to be a, a lot in the market that's willing to negotiate on that. So hypothetically, or so we we have a cost for five police units, and 
decked out and everything. Instead of going through the people who were buying it from or out of straight cash, they say this is what we need, even though they're already being decked out. They, 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 they show up decked out because, mm -hmm. I mean, honestly, they're just, they're just working better like that. It's more yeah. professional. This, that first, any of the first option you gave can work for that. It can, and you don't have to do a separate financing for each thing. If you're actually the town of Anthony, which I know is not y'all, but the town of Anthony, about once every three to four years, they call me and go, hey, we're doing a fleet redo. I need this amount of police cars. I need these kind of, kind of city vehicles. And they just take a whole bunch of stuff, clump it into one financing, pay one set of issuance costs so they have one payment and move forward. So and that's kind of what my brain is at if we were to go this route is... <clears throat> we figure out if we want a bus and some SRL vehicles, even if we want another fleet vehicle, and we do all that on our end, and he just tell him what, how much exactly, it is. Yeah. exactly, yeah. and we go pay cash for yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. And we'll, what we tend to do is, so we'll give you on our proposal, we'll give you our issuance cost, and it'll say um, right now it'll say thirty days. This rate's good for thirty days. So if it goes outside of that 30 days, we try to give you a grace period. We'll tell you if you're kind of cutting the window on it. But the other half of that is I'm going to keep watching that as we're coming up toward funding. And if I have the opportunity to index it down, I'm going to index it down for you. <clears throat> Our first duty really is to you, not, not us. So we're basically an advocate. We do the structural writing for you and then make the market compete for you. Um, so and then we ride with you through the whole thing. So if you guys need a payment coupon, if you need an, uh, an invoice, if you need a FedEx label, you want to refinance, you have questions <laughs> on a real time payment date, we ride through you with all of that. Even if you were to refinance it, we are on the new note with you as well. But our job is to advocate for you and make the banks compete for your business. So is there a time frame before you can refinance? Let's say we make the purchase now. Sure. Uh, interest rates go down. Is there windows or a time frame there for, before we can do that? Or? So you just have to get to the call call date. Once you hit the call provision, call date, then you can refinance. Okay. Um, and typic, I'll also tell you this. We watch all of these in conjunction with the market. And if the market is moving down, we'll continue to watch your rate and your payment. And the day that there is an economic benefit to the school district, I'll call you and say, if we were refinanced today <coughs> with your issuance cost of refinance, Here's how much in dollars you would save. Do you want to do that? Yes, no, doesn't matter to me. We're just going to at least give you the option. Mm -hmm. And if you're on a longer term, so let's say you did a time warrant for a million dollars for 15 years, as the market steps down, I can step that down with you. We can do multiple refinancings throughout that. Um, man, that's ultimately up to you guys. Typically, you don't see that with a school bus because it's only going to go like five years. <laughs> so it's kind of hard to refinance that twice. Uh, but what I tell my clients is, listen, fall in love with your vendor. Fall in love with your equipment, but do not fall in love with your rate because that, unless it's three years ago and sub 2%, please fall in love with that and lock it in. Uh, but right now, knowing the market's coming down, don't fall in love with that rate. We can find you a better one in a couple of years when the, when the market starts coming down. A couple of things on the lease, I'll tell you that you can add to your complaints. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we, we lease about 2,200 vehicles, and so the problem there is tracking to make sure that when you turn one in that they're not still charging mm -hmm. charging you for it two years later, mm -hmm. which we're finding that out. And on a new one they charge us about $160 a month for maintenance. Or mm -hmm. we can, we have the ability to go go to a place and just get full change and charge them. Sure. And so if you're not watching your fleet, you can get charged a lot of things that that $35 here, $45 mm -hmm. here. We're, we're catching a lot of that on our leasing program, mm -hmm. especially after we turn vehicles in. Mm -hmm. We're not taking them off the lease well, for 90 days. And the other thing is, too, is they're charging you interest for a lease. Yeah. So why would you pay interest on something you're not going to own? Once That's, it's over 100000 right? The, they, don't, they don't care about the maintenance. Mm -hmm. They only cover it up to 100 mm -hmm. And, and I, I know cities that have gone that route, and they loved it, but most of them were like, 30, 45,000. They only let their cars hit 60,000 miles, which is like, man, you're breaking them in at 60,000. <laughs> so um, it, it has a place. It's just usually not in rural America. It just doesn't work super well with y'all's model. 
What other questions y'all got for me? I know that's a lot of information. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We just need to put our list together. Yep. If you guys give me the list, I can uh, put it all all together. We can work with it. No, you said one of those buses you're looking at is an activity bus, correct? <coughs> yeah. So typically with activity bus, we go a little bit longer just because of cost. Mm -hmm. um, so we can take that out 10 or 12 years. I can make a pretty good case for that. Um, I think the longest I've seen on one of those is like 13, maybe 14 years. Which I wouldn't go that long on a bus, but that's that's the board's prerogative. But then as well, you know, you get monies in from Austin, and you're like, well, we thought we needed 10 years, but I don't. You can pay it off. Right. So that, that would definitely be an option. Well, thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, and, and Matt, thank you, first of all. It was very informative. But <coughs> Chief, while you're here, if you don't mind coming up, Chief Peterson, and just kind of like what Ron was talking about, talk about, he actually bought one of the vehicles. I just, talk about what, 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 what you priced for us. So, with this company that we go through, that we just purchased some for the police department for patrol. Uh, they opened a shop in Lubbock. Uh, they fully outfit them. They get with the companies. We tell them what equipment we want. <coughs> you know, standardize across the board. Whatever they want to do, or we can tell them. We put it in. They will outfit it, get it in Lubbock. They bring it to us. We've already had one that some wiring came loose. They came to us. They fixed it on site. If they can't fix it, they'll take it to their shop in Lubbock. They'll fix it. They do that indefinitely. There is no time where they will not do that. As long as we own one of their vehicles, they will do it. Um, to speak on some of the leasing stuff, when I was trying to redo the fleet, for police vehicles, it's I've talked to some counties that have done it uh, when I was doing my research. They're not going to outfit it for you. So you're going to have the cost of, as far as the police vehicles go, you're going to have the cost of you know, putting this stuff in, you know, the cages, the back seats, the radars, the cameras, everything. Pay a third party to do it. If something happens to it and the lease company wants to pick it up, we can't turn that police equipment over to them. So you're going to have to rip it all out, give them back the vehicle. When they send you a new vehicle, you're going to have to put it all back in there. And the costs become astronomical at that point. As far as the police vehicles go, I can't speak on anything. But... Um, I don't have the papers in front of me uh, as far as the pricing, but you keep talking. I have it in the stack, <laughs> and he brought one of the vehicles. If y'all yes. wanted to look at it, I only have one right now. But if y'all want to pass it on, yeah. yeah. it's this company is uh, the lowest price that I've gotten. They, you know, that's for five. It, it's oh, been. It's a really nice car. <laughs> I mean, y'all are welcome to come out and look at it, so you so you know what you're looking at. Yeah. Can we do that now, or do sure, we? yes, ma'am. If y'all want to. to. And like, Matthew, I just like having the uniform. You're good. Uh, do you have any more questions for Miss Sullivan? No. I think All right, hey, thank you very much. One, one other thing I would mention too that it's just important for the red tape. Uh, we probably also already have a template for your school term. So this is not going to be new. It's not going to get hung up. They know us. We're well known in, across the state, and we have templates specific to different uh, attorney firms for what they like stylistically, and it speeds that process up. And we probably know your mentors. Perfect. I appreciate you very much. Thank you. If you want to go look at the vehicle real quick, I think it's a little right after. Okay. So. Um, Okay. I I believe each principal gave you a copy of their stuff, so I'm going to kind of bypass that. Mr. Ginsler is getting his superintendents, and part of his superintendents is to present to y'all. And Ms. Baker is going to record it. And I told him, I said, I'm going to have to tell the board, that way they don't think Baker is just recording you. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I know it's like a long board meeting and I'm adding to it and you know Richie said we didn't have to talk but like he said I'm working on my superintendent sir and 
I have to record so many video hours of me doing like district level leadership, and I don't know if it gets more district level leadership than board meetings. So I, I had to I had to ask him if I could talk a little bit. But I'm just going to do our normal like you know spill about the high school. Uh, currently, our enrollment's at uh, 455. We have one at the academy. Uh, we had two graduates just this week from the academy. We had five this year. So that's a, that's a pretty cool thing. As far as seniors go, so over 142 seniors, uh, 97 of them already applied to at least one college, awesome. or, and some of them multiple colleges. All 97 have a, a F, uh, their FAFSA ID. Around 20 students have completed the student part of the FAFSA, and more are getting done daily. Um, hopefully, they'll have them all done by Christmas break. Uh, seven seniors have already signed their first papers to be uh, get processed in the military, so that's a cool thing. Um, wow. And then so far they've received $163,300 in scholarship offers from universities. So that's a pretty good deal right there. It's pretty cool. Uh, on a personal note, so like recently what we've had going on, like I, just for me personally, I was asked to speak at the Veterans Day breakfast. And we had the big Veterans Day at the, at the middle school, but we also had a breakfast. And uh, I was able to speak at that. That was awesome, especially since uh, when they asked me to do that, it was, it was something easy to talk about because both my parents are retired Marines. So that was a that was a good deal. Obviously, I don't have to tell you guys this, but obviously we're football district champs. You already know that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know we had that the playoff game, the crushing. That was a crushing loss. Me and Richie were talking about that afterwards, and uh, you know we're, I, we're talking about how losses like that stick with you a thousand more times than any big win ever could. I still remember. Some of the heartbreakers that I took, like they were yesterday. Uh, funny story about, uh, like, kind of a side story. Uh, that whole week, uh, leading up to the game on Thursday, they, they were asking me, um, "Hey, Mr. Jones, we're going to have a fan bus. Mr. Jones, we're going to have a fan bus. We're going to take some students to, to the game. We're going to have a fan bus." And I already knew how. I, I didn't have to be like Nostradamus to figure out how this was going to. I was going to call Albert, and I was going to be like, "Hey, Albert, uh, I need a bus for the fan bus." And I knew. I already knew what he was going to say. And I bet you already know what he's going to tell me. I'll get you a bus, but you're going to have to drive it. <laughs> so, you know, it, it worked out good. We, we took about 25, 25 students, you know, and two TAs rode with me, uh, chaperones. Um, we took them out to eat. Thankfully, Cindy had my CDL right so I could drive it. So, <laughs> that was good. Uh, basketball seasons obviously kicked off. I, I know both boys and girls uh, lost this last Tuesday, but they played it again tomorrow. And we're playing against Midland Greenwood and all three teams. Um, the girls are playing uh, Lovely Trinity, I believe. And then, of course, we have the Falls Tournament coming up December 5th, 6th, and 7th. So that will be a big one. Um, the, the boys will play Monday over Thanksgiving break at Lovely Kai. So I, I'm not sure about the girls. Uh, we have December uh, retesting coming up. Uh, that's going to be the week when we come back from Thanksgiving. So the EOC retesting will be happening uh, that week. And then a big thing that's coming up, um, and it's a... We've been talking about it. We did that the CTE uh, tour um, like a month ago, and you know we we had the obviously the custodians were still here. I think Jesse probably still here, but uh, you know the custodians did. We we me and Mr. Coronado we took the custodians out to lunch because all the work they did to get that, that CTE wing ready to go, cleaning it up. I mean it took it took a solid week for us to get it looking absolutely pristine for that tour, and it still looks good. And uh, so we're planning on doing a community CTE tour. We, we've talked about dates. We're thinking maybe it's got to be a Wednesday because, you know, every other day of the week is crazy. But, you know, you got basketball games and everything's going on. So we're thinking probably Wednesday the 22nd of January. We haven't made That's not set in stone, though. That's just the day that me and Ms. Baker were kind of talking about as a good day for that community CTE tour. We so have that church. we can get. Yeah, we church. church. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, every day's full, though. It's, it's, there's no day that's not Maybe taken. Earlier in the day. Wednesday's the only day that's not school event related. So, uh, but anyways, we're going to do a community CTE tour uh, just to invite some people, hopefully, get you know some people interested that aren't going to school here. You know, some kids that. You know, maybe you're in neighboring districts and they see that wing and they'd be like, hey, maybe this is something that we want to be a part of. Because, I mean, to me, like I've, like I've said, when we had the CTE meeting, uh, that last board meeting, I don't, I don't think I've seen better CTE facilities, especially at the three-day level, than what we have. So I think that would be pretty attractive for, for a kid that, that would want to come to school here. Like, you can come over here, you can get certified, you can do some cool things like culinary and law enforcement and phlebotomy and welding. I mean, like, who offers that? So it's pretty special. So that, that community event, I think, 
um, will be a pretty big deal. Um, other than that, I, I don't have anything else. You guys have any questions for me as far as the high school is concerned? How much advertising are we going to do or announcing that so we can? Because yeah, I know that's last time the, we did have that's, that's, that's why we wanted to get that date set mm -hmm. so we could get Mary Elizabeth to start putting it in the paper well, and talk about it for a while. Uh, yeah. We're we're going to do it different. We're going to do it like we did that day, where our kids are demonstrating what we're doing. Because that's a whole different thing when you walk in and see kids doing it versus an adult telling you about it. Tell them we'll feed them. Some well, we are going to have food. We, we are. We already thought about that, Rebecca. We already thought about that. We're going to have some kind of snack or food for them as well. Absolutely, yes, man. Is there any other questions or anything? Sure. I saw our host tonight, uh, Kate, tomorrow night. Yes. Tomorrow night. Train in Louisville. Oh, yes. oh, oh, yeah, right. yeah. football, football right. playoffs. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. We are hosting. We'll probably host the next two or three weeks, is my guess. Yeah. I'd gotten a call just yet, like yesterday, the day before, about um, the next week, the Thanksgiving week, about it. Like, I think West Plains put, might play Lampasas if they win, so they're thinking about Lemise as a. They were asking me about the facilities and the locker rooms and stuff like that. So, I mean, that would be a, that'd be a pretty cool game. <laughs> yeah, West Plains might yeah. play Lampasas. Yeah. So. Uh, hopefully they, they both win and they won't play here. So that'd be a good one to host too. You guys got anything else for me? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope you have a great Thanksgiving. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Did you get it, Baker? I forgot to push my head. <laughs> 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 Do y'all have any questions for any of the principals? Because I'm on, I'm on roll past the rest for any any other questions. I do. I, I, it's not so much a question. I don't know if it's a suggestion, but after Tuesday's game, I was sort of embarrassed how our students left the gym on that section with all the trash on the floor. Like they didn't even pick up anything, and I felt so bad because, you know, the least we could do is throw it in the. Trash can, I, I hate, I saw that and I thought that was so embarrassing for me because I thought, I cannot believe such a mess we did and I hope that we, our students can get better at that. You know, I mean, yeah, it was, it was it. it's pretty much everything went on the floor, not in the trash. So. Yes, yes ma'am. I didn't, I didn't notice no, that. No, no, I know, you did. I was sitting right there and I could see when after everybody walked off, I thought, oh my gosh, I cannot That's an that. easy fix. Easy fix, yes, ma'am. Yes, please. Sure, just tell just. No, he was working. He was working. He's always there. He's always there. All the gardeners still come help him. Anytime. I am going to jump. Enrollment, you can kind of see it. It's pretty stagnant right now. Down to one academy because evidently we did have one more graduate, which is awesome. Uh, do what? You had one today? Both of you have one plus one today? Yeah, there we go. All right. <laughs> love it. Love it. Uh, if I could get all my P-Tech people to come up here, which there, it, it's a lot of people. Um, guys, I've been talking about P-Tech for a while, but we had our parent meeting finally. Ms. Gonzalez was there. These guys were there. Can I get them on P-Tech? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I just want y'all to see what parents are seeing. Yeah, y'all too. Because I think that... Um, <laughs> because uh, questions are going to come, and they come to me all the time. They're going to come to me, but I also think y'all will get some questions. Is as, yeah. as uh, you know, after that first meeting, we finally unveiled what it is, and the meeting was a typically attended meeting. There wasn't a ton there, but we put the video on our website. Frankie is in charge of our P-Tech stuff, and we've got a P-Tech spot on our website. Um, I can show it to you real quick and it and I'll show you where it is that way it's easy for you to direct people to it I can't spell <laughs> but if you go to about us and then go to P Tech everything we do is going to be right there yeah. alright so all of the information I talked about is there that night if you scroll <laughs> down every meeting we have the agendas are there our P-TECH application, which I have a, a folder. Have you had any trade in? We are not taking them until January. We're not going to look at them a bit until time. But I did want to go through what the parents saw that night because 
I feel like we've talked so much about it, sometimes we lose track of exactly what it is. So if you could just see the screen up there, this was the exact presentation we gave them. I won't go through the narrative because you can read it, but the goal was for them to start thinking about the future for their 8th grade student, which is not something you always think about in the, the fall of your 8th grade year. But that's why this program is different because it's going to take a different kind of student to be able to be successful in it, but it's going to take some of our students to be successful in it. They just don't know what they're capable of yet, so we kind of wanted to flip their train of thought. We talked about getting an associate's degree and or industry certification. I say that all the time because I don't think it's either. I think it's both. I do. Uh, while getting hands-on, so what does, here's the tricky question, and Mary Elizabeth, we kind of talked about this. What separates CTE from P-TECH? CTE is not going anywhere. All those CTE programs are staying put, but to be a P-TECH school, you have to pick two or three of these, and the difference is everything is paid for by the school here. On the CTE side, do you want to talk about how we pay for certifications or for tests on the CTE side? The cosmetology, the welding, and all that. Well, welding would be PTEC, but the other stuff. So, all students, their, their initial certification test is paid for by us, the district. If they pass that initial test, then they've, they've earned that certificate free. Now, we are reimbursed for that. If they, they fail it and they have to retest, right now, now, that will change with P-TECH, but right now, the student is responsible for paying for that test. Um, but most of our students pass the first round. So, they're, I mean, they leave school, they've earned that certificate, um, and they don't have to worry about it. CNA is the biggest one because if a student wants to become an RN, they have to have that CNA. And we have kids in college right now that didn't take the CNA program and they're having to pay for that out of their own pocket. Whereas some of our kids who went through that and earned that certificate, they've already got that and that's already checked off the box. They don't have to do the CNA class at night on top of their studies. Um, where PTEC differs from everything, and this is the last slide, will help you. one of the ways it's different is they actually get work experience. Now, yes, Right now, in our CTE, they get some experience, but this is, and Mona couldn't come tonight, but this, this is when we are partnering with the community and partnering with the workforce for them to actually go, basically be interns at places, while also being a student at La Mesa ISD, and hopefully getting jobs. I mean, that's the ultimate goal, is if Ernest comes and does an internship for me, he does a good enough job that I hire him, you know, fresh out. Matt Roach has sent me, do y'all know Isaac Trejo? Uh, he got hired today. He, he's already got a business card. Uh, Matt Roach has sent it to me. Somebody that he had been kind of linked up with through Roach through his construction class. He did a good enough job that that guy called him and offered him a, a job today. That, and that's the goal, is for all these kids to leave here with employment. Um, so what does that look like for an eighth grader? And that's the big deal, right? Because we're talking about down the road. So what does work-based experience look like for an eighth grader? Going to be ninth grader next year. And that's kind of what it would look like. You're not going to work next year for somebody, but what you are going to be is mentored. That very bottom one will be matched up with someone in the community in one of these fields, and they will be your one-on-one -on -one mentor. Uh, and then we'll take them on industry tours to see workplaces, learn about businesses, meet employees, ask questions, and then, and then the top one's the easiest one. We'll have guest speakers come to them to talk about it. Uh, the benefits to the community... I will tell you, they're excited. I'm meeting with the Chamber of Commerce again tomorrow at 9. They're excited because they need this work, workforce replenished. Uh, the candidates that we, we want to provide them with the candidates that they want to hire. And that, that's the goal because what better way to make Lamisa thrive than to let Lamisa graduates go be the ones making Lamisa thrive. And that's, that's the goal. Improve productivity and performance. Address the skill gaps through tailored training. And again, I talked about it a while ago, but the student is matched one-on-one -on -one with an adult professional in the career path that they pick. And then the bottom one, we fill our workforce with our kids. And it's just a cycle. So it's the school and the student and the community and the business partner just working together and working together. Um, 
Those are the three that we, you can't do them all. Now, if we get it going and it's working, we can slowly start moving more of our CT over to P-TECH. But you can't do them all. TEA will not let you. You have to limit the ones you do. They told us two or three. So these are the ones that we picked. And Baker, do you want to kind of talk? And I keep saying, Baker, anyone can chime in. Do you want to kind of talk about why we came to these three? Well, the medical, that's our longest program. Um, it was successful before I got here. Um, many years before I got here. So that's our longest one, and we already offer those two certifications there. Law enforcement, that program is growing, and um, Dora is great at um, what she does there, um, and she can also facilitate those classes online through Howard College. So she's a great resource to have with those kiddos. Um, and then she's also offering the 911 dispatch certificate this year. So that's another reason. And some of her kids have already been doing some dual credit, extra dual credit through Howard, majoring in criminal justice. So that kind of sparked my attention there. And then welding, by far, like I said, last board meeting we had over 45, 50 students become certified. So that's was Programs can qualify a student to gain college hours up to 60. 60 gets you an associate's degree, but if you don't get the associate's degree and you still get 10 hours, you, you still did 10 hours that you didn't have to pay for. Because, go ahead. I just wanted to, right now, just what we offer for what our <coughs> normal dual credits take, kids take is 24 credits. So we're already offering quite a bit without adding that. So it's just, it's going to benefit kids even more. The reason you have to get into it in ninth grade is because to pull it off, you've got to have a very specific path to get there. Now where we're different, we're not different. What PTAG does, it's going to put a lot on the student. One of the questions I would ask that night is, can a student also participate in extracurricular? And the answer is yes. The student can participate in as much as that student can handle. And if they want to play football, like we talk about Roscoe a lot, those kids play football, they're in band, it's going to be as much as that kid can handle. And through the application and interview process, which I'm going to talk about here, and, and, and this is the big thing, that's what separates it doesn't PTAC. It doesn't cost them anything. Now, this is how we as a district invest to get paid off down the road, because the goal is... And, you and I were talking about it earlier. We have left a lot of money on the table in Lamisa Independent School District over the last five, six, seven years. Uh, when I say a lot, if you wanted to add it up, you're probably looking in the five, six million dollar range when you add up the years. This came about, I say it all the time, because Bob and I were sitting there thinking about what, what do our kids need? And they needed opportunity to, opportunity provided by us to walk across our stage, not just with the high school diploma, but with either an industry-based certification or an associate's or hours towards it so that they can go be successful. But what that also does is it turns right back around if they have that <coughs> certification or if they have that associate's degree, and Lamisa gets paid for it. Yeah. And here in a few years, we're starting with 20. TEA makes you start with only a small cohort. So this next ninth grade year, we're looking at 20 to 25. If we can, can kill it, then the current 7th graders who will be 8th graders, when they get to ninth grade, we're bringing them up, bump it up to 50 or so. And so if you're in 5th grade right now, by the time you get to high school, we hope this is a well-oiled machine so we can get all of them through it. So that would be 100-ish kids graduating with an associate's a certification or a diploma and a diploma. And then all of a sudden, if you've got 100 of them, that's an, e, that's an $800,000 to a million dollars back in the general fund of Lumisa ISD every single year. So you just keep putting it back in the kids, and it's just a cycle. Everybody gains from it. So that's, that's the long-term goal. So what's our next steps? And this was the last slide for the, for the parents that night. So the application is in that folder. I gave you all that black folder. There's an the application in there. The flyer, Ms. Kelchick, thank you for making that. Would you like to talk about your awesome flyer? Um, <laughs> the application we're working with we're working with the company that does a lot of P-TECH schools throughout the state so we kind of Frankie does a lot of work with that but we form this application then we'll interview and the interview is the kid and the parents now 
who is the candidate for this? Because here's where everybody that doesn't know about it honestly says the wrong thing because everybody thinks it's our smartest kids and it's not. What P-TECH was formed for was so the kids that typically do not go to college have a chance to go to college. So, Mom, do you want to talk about the percentages? And I'll remember them right off the top of my head. 80%. You have, out of your cohort, you have to show that 80% are at risk or, you know, eco, eco disc, something like that, so that it's actually providing an opportunity they probably wouldn't have otherwise. Mm -hmm. It's one of the reasons when you stay, you know, you kind of track them, they have to stay on that course, because three years down the road, if they decide to come out, that's changing your, your numbers. And if kids come in, but I think it's right around 80%, you've got to show that you're targeting towards what typically would be an underserved student. Which, if we end with the end goal, if all of our students are doing it, then we never have to worry about our ratio because we sit right around 83% economically disadvantaged. Um, but we had a parent come up to me, and it was it was the last conversation I had that night. And I'm going to let each of you kind of chime in. But we had a parent come up to me, and they asked me, what happens if my kid doesn't get, get in the first year? And I asked them, well, why? Why would? Why do you think he won't? He goes, well, he doesn't have the best grades, but it's we, we think he's capable. And that's what I told the parent. I said, that's why we're going to interview you too, because you don't have to have the best grades. You got to have a strong work ethic. And I told her, I'm way more concerned about your attendance and your discipline, because if you're not in school, you ain't going to be able to pull this off. If you're always in trouble, you ain't going to be able to pull this off. But if you're at school and you're not in trouble, then you will be considered to be a part of this program. And I am extremely excited about it. I think it changes the landscape for Lamisa. Yes, ma'am? Will you talk with their teachers as well? The, app, the application, they'll have reference letters, they'll have everything. Okay. Yes, ma'am. It's not much different than a college okay. application. Did you, you might want to mention that you all interview the parents to make sure that they're bought in as well. Yeah, we interview the parents along with the kids because the parents have to be if, if April wants Jake to do it, but Jake don't want to do it, or if Jake wants to do it and April doesn't want him to do it, it won't work. They've both got to be on board to make this thing go. So a ninth to 10th grader is not eligible? <coughs> not right now. Now, as she said, we're still trying to get them in as much as we can on the back end, CTE obviously, and some dual credit. But the first cohort has to be, we have to start with these 8th graders. So it'll be next year's ninth grade class will be the first ever cohort of this. All right, so if you have something to chime in, Avid, y'all heard Mr. Carrion talk about Avid. Avid came because of this. And instead of just picking who's an Avid, we even if you don't make P-Tech, we think you're going to benefit from Avid. That's why we had every eighth grader take Avid. But, Megan, do you have anything else to add to it? Um, so we already have several teachers that teach dual credit face-to-face -face on campus and that's you know if we can have that that's better than an online course um, but online courses are good too because it does teach those kids responsibility which we will have to have facilitators you know to kind of oversee that especially because we also have to change our mindset dual credit here now usually starts sophomore year. We're allowing freshmen to do this. So that's a huge transition from going to middle school to high school and then adding dual credit on top of that. So having AVID, which we will have to bring some AVID courses up to the high school, that's also going to benefit and help train those kids. They're already being trained very well with the note taking and that responsibility. Um, Michelle Llewellyn, she's working on her master's right now, and she will be finished with that um, next school year. So she will be able to teach English 3 dual credit face-to-face, -face. and that's very exciting because it, you have to kind of get creative. But our freshmen who will be in this cohort will probably be taking English dual credit as a freshman and still having to take their EOC test. So you're going to have to have a very dedicated student. But in order to take English dual credit, you have to pass that TSI. And they're going to be taking that as an eighth grader. And that's my favorite part of it. Because part of the CCMR is our kids try to get them TSI compliant, which 
I know usually when I was at the high school, we were still taking them as a junior and a senior. To bump it all the way to eighth grade. They may not all pass it, but they've all taken it. And now they know what it's like, know what it's like and now you're going to have a better shot as a freshman or sophomore is getting those things. And what's good about TSI, those scores are good for five years. So if they take it as an eighth grader, they're compliant once they go to college. Gensler, you got a thing on it? You're not being videoed. You seen the code? No, yeah, <laughs> no, but we, you know, we talked about showing off the CT tour. But like, how big of it? I mean, who around here is going to have this kind of a program for their kids, where you can graduate from high school and have an associate's degree, have half of it paid for? Talk about just like being <clears throat> debt free, be able to if you're. You know, you're working that hard during high school. You could graduate with your bachelor's by the time you're 20, if not earlier. So, I mean, it's exciting. I'm anxious to see uh, with these next year's freshmen how many of them are going to leave here with an associate's degree paid for. So, it's a good deal. It's exciting because it's a culture shift. Um, I, I, I mean, I, I told you about following my brother. I'm sure my brother would have probably applied for this, and then I would have been like, I'm going to do what my brother's doing. So, I think it's just bigger than just getting something started, I think it's going to uh, change lives. Uh, 100%. It's, it's going to change gener generational lives. Yeah. Right? Yeah. 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 That's an easy way out. <laughs> 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 it's about changing the mindset. And it already is changing. I think we have more kids taking dual credit this year. And we had more kids take summer classes because they wanted to get ahead in class ranking. Mm -hmm. We haven't seen that in a long time. So we are very excited. Well, I just wanted to thank y'all for everything that you're doing. Because sometimes these kids, they don't believe in themselves, and they, they don't, don't yeah. they don't realize that there's there's more. There's you know after high school to even think of college or to be able to afford it. And I feel like I love that you're interviewing the parents because they need to understand the process too. A lot of the times they don't. They're thinking, okay, well, how much am I going to have to pay? There's no way we can do this because... 100%, but, and it scares them off. To get them to understand, and a lot of them, um, we have a parent who wants her kid to go to college, but she's embarrassed to come ask for help. So, you know, when y'all are going out there and y'all are doing things like this, you have no idea how much it's helping because it's, you know, okay, they have to come in. So it kind of breaks the ice for them to ask these questions. Absolutely. So it's, it's amazing. I appreciate y'all. It's exciting. It's a very exciting time. Jasper? I'm going to agree with you on the parent buy-in because the parents are going to have to be the motivators for their kids when it gets tough because it is going to be hard and it's a balancing act that the kids are going to have to learn, but it prepares them for life because in life we all have to balance our time. And I, I do want to say sometimes, you know, a lot of parents get upset with the rigor that we're pushing on our 8th grade kids, that they need that because that's what's going to get them to be successful in this program. And so we do have high expectations and high standards for the students. And, and Abbott has really pulled that out because it's, it's showing not just the teachers, you know, the expectations that we have to hold too, but the students are seeing it too. And so we, we tell them that, you know, we have to be held accountable so that we can be successful and you can achieve your dreams. And so just reminding them, what's your dream? What are you going to do? You know, and having those conversations with them, it gives us the buy-in that they need, too. And so I think it's it's a, a team, not just us, but with the parents, it's the whole community buying into it. Too. Yeah, That's Howard's excited. Thing. This is the most excited I've ever seen Howard to work with Louisa. And Mona's excited. She called today wishing she could come to Sands move their playoff game. Mm -hmm. Stacy Stewart, you got anything? I like it because it opens doors to my kids that they would have never thought possible. And a lot of my kids, like, they thrive. She's talking about her special education. Yeah, yeah sorry, not, not my kids. She's not going to She is my kids. But um, it's just things that they never thought were possible, so they've never even looked at the college avenue. And so we're opening that door to them, and we're having those conversations, because we already start meeting with kids in 7th or 8th grade. And a lot of times they didn't think that was a possibility. When we talk about it, they're like, that's not for my kid. Well, now they're seeing that it is an option for every kid. And they already get that. They love the CTE programs because they thrive in those. So now they're going to get that certificate. And it's just an open door to them that they're, they're something outside of school. And, you know, every kind of what you were talking about, this started years ago as early college high school, right? Mm -hmm. But it was only to get your associates. Mm -hmm. And I've told you all a lot. It's different now. Mm -hmm. There's more out there than just college. Not everybody's meant for college anymore, but that doesn't mean they're not meant to be successful. So P-Tech 
<coughs> right in the industry part. So you've got two paths you could take. You might be that college kid. Well, you got that route, but if you're not that college kid, there's still a way for you to be successful go this route. And if you're that kid that's just unbelievable, go both routes. You know, which I think that's my favorite part about P Tech is it didn't just focus on the college kids; it focused on all the kids. Well, I'm about, oh, and more thing, like, shouldn't speak for me. Well, I, <laughs> for our kids, they also have we have Texas Workforce Commission that comes in and helps with things after that. But so many times, our kids wouldn't go forward with that; they would deny it because they didn't think that it was an option for them. <coughs> they will help pay with college; they'll pay for a paid internship. If they want to be a welder, they'll buy all their supplies for them. Barber and um, cosmetology. <coughs> so we were leaving so much money on the table for these kids and these families and opportunities and this has really opened their eyes to see that we should do that you know now parents are like i want you to do that and that's huge huge so mom no I, I could just say everything they just said but in all honesty i'm like where was this 10 years yeah. ago because with our Maddie had to yeah. pay, you know, we had to do a cna class afterwards and all that in the summer i i would have loved that <laughs> And I'll type in as a parent, my daughters went through a program like this. It wasn't called P Tech, but like my youngest daughter, she graduated with her pharmacy tech and her associate's degree before she graduated high school. And like my husband passed away. So that was a huge benefit for us because I was worried about how am I gonna pay for college for my kids? You know, I don't make enough as a teacher. And so I felt very blessed that they had that opportunity. Well, you stole it right before you started talking. I was going to say not just the college path, but I think those kids, our kids that need just a certificate to go to work and something to prove that they can get paid a little bit more at the job that they want. I think that too, because like you said, college may not be for them all, but at least they know that they can go in a little more equipped to the job that they want to do. Absolutely. I mean, I think it's a great thing. The whole. We did so many college hours for free. Um, I was one of those that didn't qualify for any kind of like Pell grants, and so it was all long time to pay as well for eight years ago. So I wasn't able to yeah, take an advantage of getting some college credits and not paying for it. Really. Well, this group, along Ms. Gonzalez, is in a lot of these meetings. They're, they've got a lot of work ahead of us. This is just the, the ground floor of it. But I thought it was important that you see and hear what the parents saw and heard because if they come and ask you, you'll at least be able to speak on it a little bit as this application gets. Once this, I mean, when this kicks off, will they have someone or, you know, checking in on them or who they can go to and, you know. Absolutely. It's going to be tough. That's part of the deal. We, we have to reapply every year. Like I just reapplied again. We have to reapply every year. And part of it is we have to prove that we're doing all of that okay. every single year. And if we don't, we, we, we get removed from this world. Thank you guys. Thank very you much. All. Thank you. Um, okay, I'm going to blow through this, but I thought it was good. I sat through this. This is not my PowerPoint. This was from. Um, Orange Grove and Alpine Independent School District. But this comes up every year and it's on its way. And it's a con confusing talk. Are we good? Are we good? It's a, I just didn't know if I could keep going. Do we have questions? Okay, so property value study. Talking about another place where we leave money on the table. This was one of the best ways it's ever been described to me. Because um, it, it gets said as this. It, it'll say... Lamisa ISD failed the property value study for the 24-25 school year, right? That's what it said. It's what it said for the last three to four years in Lamisa. What's misleading about that is Lamisa ISD didn't fail anything. We have no control over it. The Dawson County Appraisal District fails the property value study. We just suffer the consequences for it. And... That was very confusing, I thought, last year for every, the community to really grasp when that comes out. So this explained it better than anything I've ever seen. So I'm not going to over-talk, but I'm going to go through it. So 150-plus Texas public school districts are currently not receiving their full state-determined allotments due to underfunding caused by the CAD, which is the County Appraisal District, and the Comptroller Disputes. These are 
all the schools. So used to, and Mr. Telchik, you've been doing audits for a long time. This list used to not be this big. This is how many schools failed the property value study over the last year, which means all those schools are not receiving the full amount of funding that they should be getting for something they have zero control over. Now, I'm going to kind of... Okay, so this, the cut was a really good example of it. All right, so Title I recaptured districts. We've got a couple of those around us. Andrews. Uh, Seminole was probably one, I would think. Maybe. What a Title I recaptured district, it's a property-rich district, which means they don't need any help. All of their money gets raised locally, and sometimes then some, right? And so sometimes they have to give money back to the state because you can still only spend what you can spend they just have so much property value, they don't need any help, okay? But most of us are in this other cup, all right? So you raise what you can raise with your taxes, forget that little window right there, and once you raise what you raise, the state covers the rest to make sure everybody's equal, right? Because we don't, they say they want us all spending the same amount of money, they don't need our help. You do, so get as much as you can and then we'll help you with the rest. But the problem is this, that little white place in the middle that withheld funding, if you fail that property value study, you don't get that amount of money. So you are not getting as much as everybody else. That's the top 10 schools. Guys, we set last time around $700,000 that we lost. Look at what some of those people, and, and if you look at the schools, guys, some of them are big, some of them are not. I mean, $20 million is what they got short because of this. Per student, that's, so that's the top 10 total. This is the top 10 per ADA. We're not on that. So we get the results January 31st. All right, so what that means is this. Our local appraisal value, they go out and appraise all the property, right? And they set their values. And then the state comes in and sets their values irregardless of what the local, the local appraisal district said. All right, so there's a good little, see if I can find it. That's really small. But this is a good example of it right here. And just pick a line. Let's look at this line right, right here, right Non-land ag and improvements. Well, the local values was set at 319.110.042. But the state said, no, no, no. That should have been valued way higher than that. So you did not collect what we think you should have. So we're just not going to help you out with the rest of that money. So what can we do? We've started going to the board meetings. Ron and I go to all of the appraisal district board meetings. Uh, we do have a good board member on the board now that's fighting for us more than they have in the past. And they have hired a new appraisal firm. But what we would really like to do is the state to just fix it. Here's the crazy part, and then I'm going I'm to go fast through this. The Tier 1 districts, if you go back to this, these people right here have a hold harmless. Does anybody know what hold harmless means? It means doesn't matter if you meet it or not. We're going to give the exception. So if a, t if a tier one recaptured district, for whatever reason, does not collect the amount of taxes that they normally do, do you know what the state does? Gives them the rest of the money. But we don't have that same thing. So that is what, this year in the legislature, we're not just fighting for teacher raises. And we're not just fighting for a basic allowance raise. We're, we're fighting for them to fix this. So it does not mean we have to raise taxes. It does not mean anything locally. It just becomes fair from the state level. Does that kind of make sense? Any questions over that? I just thought that was a really good... There's the fix right there. On the left is what it's been. On the right is what it should be. We raise what we can raise and the state pays the rest. Period. No matter if you're a rich district, poor district, big district, small district. That's all that everybody... Once. All right, last few things I have. Mr. Castillo is still 
Our goal is to roll out the open gates and start playing with them between Thanksgiving and Christmas. We're almost, he's worked a rough draft of the procedures. We're not going to roll them out until we send the procedures to family so they know what to get. I told y'all in that update, they went really, really well at the middle school the day we did it. Way better than what we expected. Um, do you have anything you want to talk about on that? No, it's just like, we're just trying to get uh, as much information out there to the parents and stuff so they kind of know what, what the purpose of Open Gate is. Um, so they're fully educated as far as the purpose, you know, when we went through that training, it's, it's the purpose of Open Gate is to prevent mass casualties. You know, it's not going to, it may miss a knife or something like that, but like you said, it's, you know, with a knife, you know, chances are you may, may get one or two students, but it was for mass casualties like guns and stuff like that. Um, but we just wanted to kind of be as open and upfront and transparent with, with community members and parents as far as how we're going to utilize Open Gate, and that's the whole purpose as far as um, the policies and procedures that we're going to put as far as how <clears throat> how schools are going to operate with them, and then we're also sending an information piece to families as far as how we train faculty to use them as well. And we're looking at uh, generating a video that we can post on Facebook and stuff. As it shows parents as what it's going to look like as parent as kids come through uh, Open Gate. Um, and, like and we'll that. also start using them with basketball, but we want to know what we're doing before we throw them out there. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Back on this, on the appraisals, uh, on that question I'm getting. What's the what's the word here? Or are you getting anything out of the appraisal district from the standpoint of this last these last bills that just went out, this last roll that just came out? It's supposed to be better. That's than what I'm being told. Like, we shrunk it a little last year. Last year wasn't as bad. This year, we, we think we're going to shrink it a little bit more. And the more we shrink it, the more money we that's The less money we lose. I've heard they've, they've made some significant adjustments. On some they changed firms. Yeah. And I think that's going to help a great deal. Okay. Yes, sir. That's all, I just want to make sure that's what you were hearing. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Questions over Open Gate? Um, I'm not going to talk about public CTE tour because Mr. Gensler did that. Gaggle outreach from the SHAC meeting. I talked about this last time we were on track for that to be rolled out over the next two weeks. So hopefully by Christmas I will have gone campus to campus, talked to all the kids, all the faculty, and that is rocking and rolling. Um, this is something, I really am just asking permission to continue to explore what we talked about at the beginning of the school year. We had talked about, um, we gave the retention bonus at the beginning and we had looked, talked about looking at doing something at Christmas. We're just asking to explore this, shoot y'all what it looks like, is this something that we are still on board to look into? Yes. Yeah. And we can play with the percent. Okay. And will that, <clears throat> will that be presented to us before the board meeting or during the board meeting for next month? Probably during, but I can get enough of it to you before that by the time you see it here, yes, you know everything. That's the goal. Yes, please. Thank you. And that will do... Dan has worked up 1% and 1.5%. Is there another? Do we want, do we want me to go lower as well? No, no, that's fine. No. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> and we're, the way we're working it right now is the same way we worked it in the uh, fall <clears throat> where there's a, there's a bottom, there's a base in that view. There's a $500 base. $500 base so that no one, exactly what we did last okay. time, no okay. one. Okay. That's yeah. Yeah. Basically, we took all the conversations we had and we've been applying it to, okay. to this. Do uh, you have anything else to add on that? Mm, no, not really. I can see you pretty much addressed that we can get what they need ahead of time. Next board meeting, are we good 16th. with okay, perfect. Monday, <laughs> December 16th? And then um, that's all I have. Do you have any questions for me? <coughs> Angie's been there a while, so she's been there a while. Because we were. He's 30. He's 30 now. Because so, yeah. we both worked out there. But that's when Justin was little. Oh, really? And he's 30. Yeah, I didn't even have to do that. We had fun out there.
the time now is 8.31. We're reconvening from uh, closed session. Now we'll go back to the financial report and someone can take a motion. To make a motion to approve us, President. Second. Second. In favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Seven to zero. I think that should be it, right? Just that one? Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, let's go. Oh. Now Guys, have a happy Thanksgiving. You too. Likewise. You too. Happy Thanksgiving.